Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today is Celebration Sabbath. Now, here's our small groups. So as you know, this is our, uh, the close of our, our celebration for our uh, Philippians, the book of Philippians we've been doing with. I hope that you have enjoyed this series. I can honestly say that I really did. Um, you know, sometimes some of the series speak to you more than others do, you know, and that's okay. It's, but this one really spoke to me as Paul is very adamant about us having a certain attitude and being able to move through life and regardless of the waves that crash over us to be able to to be okay and move through and that was super uh important i don't know it's just it really hit home as we talked about this so i hope that you found something out of that and that's what we're going to do here now in a moment we're going to talk about the the different uh, groups are going to come up and share with us, and I didn't bring my bulletin with me, so I have no idea what group is first. Alex, hit the slides, please, Alex. There we go. Floor's group is first. All right, so let's have Floor and her group come on up and share with us. You know, I battle with the projector every week. Sometimes the pictures are washed out, you can't hardly see anybody, other times they're too dark. But um, that's, that's this guy over there in the corner in the shadows. <laughs> um, the, the, apostle, the, the Apostle Paul was a big example for us. He has the passion for Jesus and he wants to he wants us to have the passion as well. It was his joy in Jesus, no matter the, the suffering. It teaches us how to be a good servant. I found a little, a little note, and it say, pray is the road to heaven, but faith opens the doors. We have to, to have faith and, and work for Jesus and rejoice in him no matter that circumstances. And when Jesus come, he find us firm and serving others and, and be an example. And we will rejoice in the Lord always. It will be that the, I feel something special in this in this uh, this this uh, book we we read. Yeah, um, is something I think uh, the Apostle Paul uh, want to bring us to 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 be um, more near to Jesus, and it, it was <clears throat> excuse me uh, wonderful and. Um, and for the being the group is is something very special because we hear the stay close to the mic. We hear the the uh, <laughs> yes the spirit, but but all the the um, the testimonies or whatever uh, passing us, we we share the thing, and it's, it's that's why it's. It's wonderful to be in a group. Happy Sabbath. I wrote something that um, I, I was an island for a long time. I didn't understand. Um, although Jesus volunteered for a long time, I didn't completely understand why God allowed his son Jesus to go through all the pain, suffering, and humiliation in Calvary. But I received the revelation which defined for me the specific reason God permitted all the horrible 
treatment that Jesus went through. God is completely full of compassion, and he needs us to share and explain. Excuse me, sorry. He needs us to, uh, let me get myself a kick of that. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Okay, the Calvary, but I received a revelation which defined for me the specific reason God permitted all the horrible treatment Jesus went through at Calvary. God is completely full of compassion, and he needs us to share and, ex and experience his own suffering that he went through seeing his own son agonizing and suffering at Calvary. And in this way, we are able to have communion with him and Jesus through the Holy Spirit, which is love. In, in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8, it's the, most, it's the best uh, definition of true love. In John 14, 6, and 7, it take, uh, Jesus takes us to his Father. And in 1 John 4, 8, it explains uh, that, G, that, love, that God is love. In this study, Paul confirmed the revelation for me because Paul takes us to Jesus and Jesus takes us to his Father and love, which is in, Jesus, which is in the Holy Spirit, our, need, our mediator, which takes us through eternity with them. Thank you. All right, next we have Irene's group. What a motley crew. No, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> this used to be the crew that met at my house, and they've moved over to Irene's house now, so that's good. Groups are subdividing and, and reproducing. That's awesome. Happy Sabbath. This, uh, this session was pretty amazing and we really got a lot out of it. I too wrote something so I won't ramble on. But uh, in Philippians, this is where we find our true joy comes through our humble faith, harmony, harmony with our brothers and sisters, serving others and sharing the gospel. I wanted to share a personal story that happened with our group uh, during the six weeks study, Danny had organized a gathering at the park with his friends, Shorty, Casper, Froggy, <laughs> Chopper, and many more friends were there. And uh, they once claimed this park as their territory, but this time they got together for lunch, fellowship, and they shared their testimonies. Actually, two of his friends that were there are ministers now. And uh, not all present had accepted God into their lives, but those who had, they shared their God stories. As each one spoke and shared the scriptures and Bible stories that impacted their lives, you could feel and see the total transformation and love they had for Christ. And Danny's siblings were telling me, Irene, if you could only, if you only knew these guys prior to today, it, it's amazing. So it was a powerful testimony to the Holy Spirit's uh, working. They had a deep desire for others to know God, and now this same territory was being used to win souls for Christ. Their love for God was moving. So we ended in a circle, we all got in a circle and we prayed. And one guy in the park, he saw what was happening and he shared his struggles and he asked for prayer. And he accepted the Lord into his heart that Sabbath afternoon. Amen. So we, we need to allow the joy you find in Christ to keep you from useless quarrels and divisions 
and to instead guide you into harmonious relationships with God's people and everyone you come into contact with. Let us all continue to share our testimonies and win souls for the kingdom, all for the glory and honor of our Lord. And um, I don't know, Pastor, if you're going to listen to this later. Your church family loves you. Sorry. Very much, Rochelle, Jojo, Ella, Grant. We love you, and we're praying for you. May God be with you. This, this uh, series that we did, we had an extra study that Irene did. She gave us some papers that broke it down more. And it was, it was pretty good because not only did we have all the questions and answers in the book, there were a lot, we also had, well, she, I don't know, would you Google them or whatever? And it broke it down to where we understood exactly what Paul was doing. And that was more, it was more easier to understand and, uh, what Paul went through and what he wants us to do. And it was really good the way we did it. Our group, that's like 10 o'clock. So it was a real good group. And I want to thank Irene for bringing that up with the park and for bringing the papers. It was really inspiring for us this week, this six weeks. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Irene, the ever prepared. The only reason Irene is not the original Pathfinder is that she's too young. <laughs> All right, uh, next we have Thomas's and Kelly's group. This was the Wednesday group that they, they helped host for Pastor because he wasn't here. So we invite the Wednesday night group to come on up and join us. I think there was a few more people that didn't quite make the photograph, but they were here, so maybe. Well, first of all, I want to make sure that, you know, there's an invitation. Please, everybody join our group because it's awesome. Uh, as you know, uh, we've been doing this for a long time since Pat Pastor Mitch, as that I remember at least. I don't know if prior to that. But I've been in many groups, and every time we're in a group, we learn something new because every group has a different character, and everybody has different opinions, and everybody has, you know, different things to to show us, and we learn from everybody. And so that's why it's nice to be in groups. It's not a one-sided thing when we learn by ourselves. And, and this way we all collaborate, and we could all come together and agree into what God wants for us in our lives. And this, this time around it was great, because there was, there was something that we learned, and that is that we need to be joyful at all times. There's times where we believe that, oh, you know, we just can't be joyful now. But as Bill said last week, you know, even at a funeral, sometimes somebody says something nice about someone, it comes up and everybody laughs. Everybody, but that it's a good laughter of brother, brotherly laughter. And so those things we've learned. And I also uh, learned a lot from my fellow brothers here because they have a lot of knowledge and they have a lot of stories. <laughs> Boy, do they have stories. And so, you know, we spend a lot of time listening to everybody's stories. And that was great because we learned from their stories, too. So I had an awesome time. And I invite everybody to join a group next time. I hope and pray, well, I hope that you guys have been studying the uh, Sabbath school lessons for the last two quarters because it's all about how Christ and God did everything for us. The salvation that we have, the sanctification that we have, all comes from Christ. We have nothing in us to uh, merit the salvation that comes from God. And, but we are released to um, respond to that love. We are, we are called to understand it, to work it in us, and to 
respond in kind. And Philippians uh, explained even more of the joy that we have in Christ because of what he has done for us, what God has done for us. He created the world for us, and he recreated our lives for us. And that, that was, uh, it was sort of like, Philippians was sort of like the icing on the cake, and the foundation is, is, is Christ and what he did, did for us. Um, I want to read the, uh, uh, the, from the last chapter of Philippians from the message. It says, actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with little as with much, and with much as with little. I have found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. And we have Tony and Raquel's group. I think you guys met Friday nights at the house, is that right? Happy Sabbath. I didn't write anything down, so I hope I remember what I want to say. Um, I, yes. <laughs> I, um, I shared with the group that I felt like I couldn't be like Paul, because if I was in chains, I would be fighting. <laughs> I don't know that I could minister to the people that had me in chains. And then there's this saying that I've heard that came to me one day, and it's called, it says, principles before personalities. And I never really understood what that meant, but that came to me thinking that no, regardless of my character, if God wanted to use me while I was in chains to minister to the people that had me in chains, his power would do that. And, um, and so, let me see what else. Um, and what, what was most um, came out to me in the book was the um, question that said, um, what was it about God's love that you learned? And that to me was just how much God loves us that he, and then because of his love through Paul, that's what his love was for people, for us, to give us the letter, for us to continue to say, to love one another. And with that love, it, it, it over, it, what does the Bible said? It casts out all fear, it, it brings all good. You know, so it just reminded me of how much God loves us and that if each one of us were the only one on earth that he still would have just died for us, that's how much he loves us. And so um, that, that's what I got out of it. Hi, good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So for the, for, uh, during uh, six uh, Fridays for our small group uh, Bible study, so I've learned a lot and we can see, uh, I, I saw a lot of things that uh, uh, Paul Apostle, uh, uh, Apostle Paul did, uh, a lot of encouragement. As a Christian, we need to keep praying, not only to, you know, just not only to us, but the people around us, and uh, we need to we need to have a faith to God that we cannot do everything without God in our lives. So we need to we need to continue to pray and faith and hope that God never lead, never leave us. He always guiding us for everything what we do. Thank you. Okay, one more thing. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. Be 
All right, now it's uh, time for my group, which was exceedingly huge. And we are not selfie people. We had to argue over who was going to work the camera. I think that's the second selfie my phone has taken. And the first one was just because the camera was pointed the wrong way. So um, that, that's like our first selfie attempt there. Um, it was very interesting being in a small group. Um, it's different when there's only two or three of you there. Um, it's a lot more intimate. We got to share some of the things that were on our hearts, some of the things that, you know, weigh on us and, and, and um, really, really went pretty deep in on some cases. So um, and, and I really, really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, very um, intimate, very, very much so. And like others have said, um, I just want to encourage everybody, please, please join a small group. It's hard to explain what you're missing until you experience it. It's like when you were a teenager and your parents used to tell you, you won't know what this is like until you're a parent. Once you become a parent, you're like, oh, that's what they meant. That's what small groups is like. You don't understand what it is you're missing until you've actually done it. And it, it's hard to explain. So I just really want to encourage everybody to to, to be involved, and I know Alberto has a few things to say, too. And we had such a great time in, in our small group. Uh, you know, like Bill was saying, you know, it was intimate. We, we were able to share things, uh, you know, were more personal uh, in our lives, some of the struggles and some of the, you know, the victories and some of the things that got us through some of those struggles. Um, Paul writings are, are one of my favorites. Uh, he has a way of presenting things to people. You know, he has a way to put it in such a way that you're like, wait a minute, what is exactly what he's saying? And then you start, you know, you start digging in a little bit and you're like, whoa, that is deep. You know, and, and if, you, if you, you know, take a, a, a closer look, you know, I love the way that he starts. Paul and Timothy, servants of God, praise be unto you. And then he started his letter, you know, he started talking about, hey, I'm in change. And because of that, some of you guys are worried, but do not worry, because I'm not. I'm preaching the gospel of God. And, and then he goes back to say, you know, I, I worry if I'm going to be gone before I'm done mm -hmm. with, you know, with my, my work here. But then he says back, I'm confident that I will be here to continue encouraging you to continue to preach the message of Jesus Christ. And then, you know, throughout the four books, you know, he, he imparts different things, you know, be a one mind, be united, stop grumbling, start arguing, be content. And then he says in the last chapter, I tell you this, rejoice always. In fact, I'm going to say it again, rejoice. I think that is such a powerful thing. You know, uh, sometimes as Christians, we became so complacent with where we are. You know what I mean? It's like we come to church and we listen to bills of the pastors or someone else, and, and, and we like what we hear, and it is great. And then we go back to our regular lives. Well, what happens? You know, are we learning more? Are we growing in Jesus Christ? You know, since we were small, you know, we, we start our kids in kindergarten. And then they go to elementary. And then they go to high school. And then we wanted to go to college. And then they want to get an advanced degree. Why do we do that? Well, what happened with our Christian life? Are we are supposed to be here all the time? Or are we just going to rise up and grow little by little? Small groups is a, a great way for us to grow as Christians. Like Bill were saying, sometimes, you know, there are things that are shared. And when you sit over there and you listen to someone's point of view, you're like, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. But it makes perfect sense to me. Small group was, was a tremendous blessing for us this time, mm -hmm. and it has been every time since I've been involved in the small groups. I really, really encourage you, if you haven't experienced that, 
please join a small group. You will get far more that what you put in an effort. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, Lourdes. Now this, I'm joining this group next time. Man, they had some yummy stuff there on the table. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Um, I'm not prepared because I was off last week from my group because, you know, since I'm retired, I go on vacation, so. <laughs> but however, um, when we did this, first of all, this is not my small group. This is Dolores's group. So I just wanted to make sure to give her credit. This is her group. It's not my group. But um, I have really enjoyed joining a small group, like uh, Albert just said, and Tomas and the others. You know, if you have an opportunity, join a small group. You just get so much more out of what you think you are going to get. You're going to get to know God in a different way. You're going to fellowship and get to know other people. So branch off, you know, challenge yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you challenge yourself and join a small group. And like with these ladies, I've, I learned so much from them because they're older than me. <laughs> I love them. They bring good food. And I, with, with Philippians, there's the, the one that got me the most and uh, for me, Philippians is a very special book because when I was, you know, I'm a crybaby, because when I was diagnosed with lupus and um, I didn't know why was this happening to me, our dear Pastor Mitch, he said, read Philippians. I said, read Philippians, okay. So I'm reading Philippians and I'm getting to understand that with God, no matter where you are in your life, the struggles that you have, you can't breathe one day, you can't walk the other day, but you're okay because God is with you and with him all things are possible. And so, when we studied this the first week, it reminded me of Philippians 1, 6, is being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So it's being confident, and that is what helped me through with my illness and with the rest of the heavy load that I've had in my life. And I know with God, all things are possible. And Kay had this wonderful saying, and I'm, they brought these bags here with you, and I will let Kay share what she shared with us. Thank you. Thank you. Dear church members, this is a wonderful privilege we all share. Get together among people, where you can talk, understand, read, pray, sing, eat, in the glory of God. It is a sharing of what you get from the love letters God has written to you. And in our study, there was so much that pertained to today's world. It made me feel, as my mother used to say, there's nothing new under the sun. The things that were happening in Paul's day, even with his life before he was touched on the road to Amias, the same thing is happening today. Some people are killing Christians. It's happening now, it's no longer a story I heard or something that happened yesterday or last year. It is happening every day. The fight between beliefs. Christians, you are an endangered species. There are those who are out to kill you. When you know the word of the Lord, like Paul turned and learned, he 
gave the others faith and trust to continue. Be happy, be kind, share, always be humble, and what I came away with most of all is that what we are experiencing today is also a lot of what Paul experienced in his day among the different peoples. But he went around preaching the word, starting the churches, knowing the people. And when he was sick, he said, he wrote a letter, he says, I can't come. But have such a person write me and tell me about all of you. I want to know what's going on with you. So we should become more aware of the people we are around. And remember, be happy, be kind, share your blessings. In all states of your life, you have blessings that you can recount. And so we came up with this. We are too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Thank you. I predict, I predict that the next small groups, this group is going to be huge. <laughs> All right. Last group, last but not least, we have Mario and Edwin. They led a group here at the church on Sabbath afternoon, so we can invite that group to come forward. Looks like they had a pretty good group. Howdy. Thank you. So, when you're the last uh, segment of the program, that could be good or bad. Basically, I concur, agree with, inspired by what's already been said. I could probably walk away with just standing on that, but I feel like I should say a few things. Uh, when I saw the book, and I read it, I thought, this is a lot of material. I'm used to the eight answer segments. These were 15 to 20 questions per section, and we had to double up twice. So I was a little rebellious. I think, man, come on now. But when I started reading the book, I thought, wow, this is something I needed. And where you break it down into discover, explore, experience, and share, it really made us analyze this material that the Holy Spirit used through Paul for us today. And as uh, Bill preached a few weeks back, that there are a lot of well-known verses in this study. We know one that was just read by Lourdes, which is a great text that God has, will complete uh, the work that he started. Also, we could do all things through Christ who strengthened us, and we know what that means is we could endure all things. And there are others. My takeaway from this study, and, and one of the things Paul is I think Bill mentioned, uh, wrote half the New Testament, and very powerful writer. But he uses a lot of material that's already in the Old Testament. And one thing that stood out for me, this thing about joy, we've been hearing it a long time. What does it mean? And one thing that resonated in researching is that Nehemiah 8.10 says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I need strength. So that stayed with me. Why are small groups really uh, important? Personal discovery. Maximum participation. And I think most of you know that I always bring up Linda Almack because Linda is the one that made me start. I shouldn't say made me, but wouldn't let me off the hook. 
to start joining or join a small group. And since then, I think I've been in quite a few. Uh, they've been a blessing. I thought I was too busy back then. I'm retired now. I can still find excuses. But uh, if you have a chance to join a small group, and some of us are busy, but I would say if you join the small group, your busyness will become secondary. So consider that. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be part of the group. I learned much from the group members. There's a lot of sharing that goes on. And I think one of the things about facilitating is you usually learn more because you're helped by the people in your group. So that's uh, my personal experience with this small group set, uh, session. I don't know if someone else would like to share some thoughts. I think Storm and Norman would like to say a few things. Give me, <clears throat> give me an opportunity and I will. You know, you know what my background is with this church. I've watched it being built. Uh, I've been a member since 1962. Both wife and, and myself were very busy in this church. It kept us busy. Sabbath school, youth division, everything. Didn't have small groups when we started out. But I was born a third generation Seventh-day Adventist when we had mostly living under the law preached to us. Getting into Paul is something which I experienced more in the 70s, early 70s, about righteousness by faith, which I think then opened up my eyes more to God and his Son and the Holy Spirit. As you know, I'm getting old. I mean, I'm 86 at the moment. I did plan on moving to retire off in another state. The Lord led me to that once I turned it over to him. He's led me all the way up to a bottleneck at the moment, which with your prayers maybe can help me get through it. The cellar just needs to put a new roof on the house so I can move up there. But it's raining. We had forest fires up there, almost wiped out the city. All these delays, the Lord in his time will do what we need to do. So today being a celebratory Sabbath, it'll probably be my last hurrah that I can talk to you and speak to you. And the reason I do is because I have a burden for every soul here. I've watched, uh, uh, being that I do have an uncle that was a missionary in Iceland preaching the word there, and he had such a passion for saving souls that he would go out on horseback back in the 20s to, to bring people to church, built his own Adventist church, which is known in Reykjavik as being one of the best churches in town. But anyway, the, the, the history and the memories are there. But each and every one, I pray for you. You're on my list. You're never going to get off my list because I want to see you there in heaven. And the reason I say that is because uh, last night I was going through the internet looking up the, the past of the San Antonio General Conference meeting where they were there in San Antonio with this huge auditorium. And they had multiple choirs there. Youth choirs, primaries, big orchestra, and the biggest Pro program they had in terms of the mu music that they sung the final song reminds me of the singing in heaven when we get there. It was, it, and the song that was sung was the mix of, of well, the Lord is coming again, lift up the trumpet, loud let it ring. And it was mixed in with the song we just finished singing. That was, that was uh, fixed by Wayne Hooper who was one of the original King's Heralds, if you remember them at all. But he wrote that song. There's actually two, two to three verses to that. There's only one verse in the book. But it, it, as they were singing, I was so impressed that I was almost in tears myself to hear all those voices singing when, you know, when, when the trumpet blows, we'll all get to heaven. 
you know, and that's when I want to see you there again. The small groups is something you need to go to, because we in our solitude, by ourselves, the Lord wants us by ourselves eventually to make us and change us to, to follow him and him only. That's all I got to say. Thank you. <laughs> I want to say something, uh, it's a blessing to be in the small groups because uh, we know one another a little more. We pray for one another, for our friends, for our church. And uh, we know about, we know and learn about the plans of God for us. I give thanks God because I have the privilege to know uh, three visitors come every Saturday to enjoy NASA. Gina and Mary and Lily, they are no part of the church, but they're coming and they start with us. That is a blessing. And uh, <clears throat> we pray for them and for his families, for the, their sons and daughters. And uh, another thing is uh, Paul, He's a, he was a man of passion. He loved Jesus. And he loved the sinners too. And this man gave his life to reach those who need salvation. And I like the part of the Philippians. If you want to read in home, I invite you to memorize this part of the Bible. Philippians chapter two. 511, because you are there. Because Paul gave a, a challenger, and uh, he want to see us in the heaven, and do it like he doing, love Jesus and love the sinners. Amen. I hope you are encouraged. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this amazing study. Thank you so much for these words that have been true and impactful for centuries, Lord. Help us to, to not just be hearers of the Word, but doers of the Word, Lord. To find your joy, to find your contentment, to find your peace. Be with us now, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>